That means that 2013 also will be made in that fashion where when something is told alone can corporate do or professor can do. But the, we are almost half of the journey to uh, reach that stage. But as of now, still the government is under the uh, thought process to introduce some notification to dilute uh, private companies, which is there in the draft stage. In fact, I don't know how many of you have aware, a draft notification is pending before the parliament. Exemption for uh, Nidhi companies, exemption for government companies, exemption for Section 8 companies, and exempting few provisions of private companies. To my knowledge, goes right, there is no dilution taking place as of now to any of the public companies. So how much ever we are unhappy with the provisions of companies act, still we have to feel unhappy and live with that only. Under specific uh, uh, notifications or relaxations, uh, uh, if it is uh, bring, uh, brought out by the government, we have to follow the same this thing. And even private company also, there is not lot of exemption is going to uh, come, very few exemptions is going to come. They are going to touch upon only four or five sections of the private companies. Section 180 and 186, where 180 borrowing, now it's applicable to all companies, whether it is a private or public. Without specialization, they can't do anything now. Now they are going to dilute it to some level, where if members, more than 50 members are there, uh, less than 50 members are there, for them it is not applicable. And like, uh, same way for uh, a loan to director section 185, they are going to dilute to the private companies that uh, when the loan amount is more than, the already the borrowing is more than twice the paid up capital, then they are prohibited. Uh, if it is less than the uh, twice the paid up capital, then, and like this, there are few changes are only proposed. I don't think uh, those changes really going to change the legal position of the Companies Act uh, entirely. We have to wait and see. And in fact, uh, we have given a lot of suggestions to ministry wherever possible. And even in the form of article also, we are giving it only. And in fact, uh, we, I, even I can take a privilege that few of the points is taken up. And now that dilution is happening also. And particularly, more particularly, private companies, lot more has to be diluted. But still, uh, I don't think government uh, is real future proposing to come, except the draft notification which is already placed before the parliament, where it deals with the very few sections. Apart from that, uh, I to conclude, before I conclude, one important uh, portion uh, which uh, with, without that uh, I should not conclude, where the Companies Act uh, 2013, where I used to deliberate everywhere, in fact people get scared, uh, more of a professional fraternity, they scare uh, whenever they see me or whenever I give lecture on Companies Act because more I scare them on uh, criminal uh, you know, legislation and the punishment side. In fact, it's not that I am scaring them, the provision itself is that. That the Companies Act 2013, it completely borrowed the provisions of Criminal Procedure Code. In fact, I can rather say one of the uh, legislation, a civil legislation, that carry more criminal provisions, that means the punishment provision is Companies Act 2013. Uh, even Indian Penal Code also, uh, as you are aware that, only a few offences there is a death sentence, and few offences there are life imprisonment sentences are there. But here, if you see, by virtue of Section 212 of the Companies Act 2013, almost 75% of the sections under the Companies Act 2013 the punishment is prescribed is up to 10 years. In fact, even criminal legislation also, this, this much punishment is not specified. Even criminal legislation also, hardly some 10, 15 section I can quote in the IPC, where it, it have got implication of more than 10 years imprisonment. Otherwise, even we can sh see the schedule of the uh, criminal procedure code where very few offenses it is causing the punishment of 10 years, but I am surprised to see the company that 2013, where by bringing one particular provision, 448, 447 talks about fraud, 448 talks about a person, whatever he does, he will be punished for the fraud. So that section as linked with the section 212, by virtue of it, almost anything then under the entire company's act, 2013, 75% percentage of the provisions, uh, it is going to get the hit of the section 447 
and in turn going to get the hit of the section 448, whereby subjecting, going to subject the professional or director or, or, or person who are dealing with the company up to the imprisonment of 10 years. In fact, this aspects government can really uh, think and see that how this can be reviewed because the professionals, the business uh, uh, community and the professional community should not be equated with the uh, 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 criminals or the person who does only crimes. Here it's a business and professionals gives a consultancy. Here it only involves an intellectual. But I really don't know why the government has that level they got a dissatisfaction with the entire corporate and director and professionals. They completely brought entire punishment procedure. In fact, you if we violate any of the provision of the prayer placement, how much is the penalty? Penalty is two crores. To whom it is applicable? It is applicable to all companies. Whether it is a one lakh prayer limited or it is a thousand crore listed companies. There is no distinction made in that. Any provision is violated in the provision of the chapter 3 and 4, it says the penalty is 2 crores. Like that, we can keep on adding so much. In fact, especially the professional front, we are really uh, to get scared only because there is an exclusive section 447 and 147 and 143. This three section is enough to regulate, not regulate, to completely hammer the professional community, that level the section is drafted where the entire professionals are uh, in, the, uh, by virtue of uh, the language is used in the section, it gives the impression that the government has completely lost the hope on the professionals. In fact, we have to again rebuild to make the government to believe and see that government is little diluting the punishment provision at least, rather than complaints, I can agree that uh, uh, as a company, uh, to do justice to their stakeholder, they have to comply and give be more transparent. But that doesn't mean that transparency can be brought only by means of punishing with a stringent uh, imprisonment. Uh, to my level best, I am representing to the uh, uh, government and whoever I come across. But still I hope the Companies Act uh, will di get diluted little more. Then only the entire act can be uh, implemented in its uh, true spirit. Even so many doubts been uh, been asked by professionals, even mail and phone about deposits and all. Now it has completely become uh, stringent. Where uh, there's a confusion going around uh, whether DPT four has to be filed or not, and uh, so many show cause notices being issued. In fact, we uh, um, uh, as a team we have uh, taken a conscious uh, uh, decision that. Anything done under the old act should not be disturbed in the new act unless specifically altered by means of the provision of uh, you know, legislated in the parliament. Otherwise, we have to be allowed to continue whatever we have done under the old act. That should not be brought under the new act. And this should be the view of the professionals and we should make the government also to understand the difficulties involved. And once again, I uh, thank all participants here and special thanks to Chief Get and Guest of Honours and thanks for everyone for giving me this opportunity and uh, made this uh, uh, function a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, Anandam. Yesterday, Act Rules and Forms, we had an experience uh, with that. Today, book launch uh, it's an experiment by the author. We'll take uh, today's uh, day forward. Thank you, uh, Dhanapal, uh, for your reflections and also taking us through the uh, journey which you have uh, traveled in bringing out this uh, book. One thing is certain. Namai pinnum valaihalai namai piritadupon iru kaigal kunu. So thank you, uh, Dhanapal, for sharing that uh, uh, difficult uh, task which you have come across. Now, it's time to uh, felicitate our uh, guests uh, today. First, uh, let me invite uh, past president of Institute of Cost Accountants, uh, respected uh, Kalyan Raman sir, to be here on the dais to honor our chief guest, Padmashri K. Raghavindra Rao. Friends, please join your hands. Uh,
I am an odd guest, so they thought it might me to give the uh, memento to Raghavendra Rao. All of them are guest of honor, but I am a guest artist. You know, in cinema, guest artist plays a very vital part. I think Raju will know that. He comes for one minute, but charges very heavily. <laughs> I don't charge anything. My charge is I am charged. There are two things on which I wanted to convey about the company that Raghavendra Rao is the most respected person who has become an entrepreneur from a professional. Professional turning entrepreneur is very, very rare. It requires a lot of insight, guts, and a vision. He has got all the three qualities. Dhanapal, Raghavendra Rao said, I met him only last some time because he did some consultancy. I met him only in the corridors. I don't know him anywhere. But he, what inspired me was his mails. He kept on giving two, three mails, inviting people. I thought guide is more important than the book. That's why I was present here today. The only thing which I want to caution my professional friends, I think he is a CA. The company set may be very good for an industry. It has got a lot of liabilities for the professionals. Many people came and asked me, Sir, my fees is about 5 lakhs. What is my liability? I said liability is 2 crores. Because if he doesn't find the fraud which is happening in the company, he will be charged. It's not easy. To, even instead of doing normal audit, we have to do fraud audit now. To find out who has done fraud. Somebody would have done somewhere and he will come to the shareholders meeting and say, you have not found out that. I think it's a good thing that the auditors are rotated. Because nobody will like to be continuing. <laughs> so the profession is very safe by rotation. I have instructed, I have given advice to all my clients, my friends in the institute, take insurance cover for your audit. So that any liability comes, insurance company will pay. Because people say, now new, new products are coming. Let this also add as a product. Insurance for auditors. I think your institute can do that. <laughs> My institute also is very keen on, the, on that. In one flagship company, I want to take only one minute of you because all of you must be eager to complete and go away. In one flagship company where I am a cost auditor, they told me what happened to 2014-15. I said the rules, we don't understand anything. I was very happy yesterday, the Supreme Court judges also said that. And Damodaran has added further. He said, very badly drafted uh, act. Act is good, but very badly drafted. And Damodaran has said, ex Sebi chief, he has said that any rule or act must be understood by a common man. If you read something, you will not understand. And in a flagship company, when I told the, the chairman of the audit committee, sir, we have not understood what is the rule for 148. Cost audit. He said, neither we have understood. You are in good company. <laughs> so this is the fate of affairs. And thirdly, uh, many of us are owners of vehicles are driving also. You need not understand all the provisions of motor vehicle tax to, to be a driver. If you want to be a driver, understanding the motor vehicle tax, you will never drive the car. 
So, like that is the Kapri Sat also, I think all the provisions we did not understand. That is why he has brought out a handbook. I was more eager to collect that handbook. That is why I was present here today. I have done my job. I have collected that handbook. I will be in touch with Dhanapal to understand it better. And last week I had an excellent occasion to meet the concerned minister in charge of the company law. Nirmala Sitaraman comes from Tamil Nadu. Tamil is very important. Ra is important. But uh, all the we, big authors are people who, are, who hold the very high post in Tamil Nadu. They don't pronounce Ra. Tamil. <laughs> I think you said that Ra is important. So I was eager to meet the Tamil lady. I went and spoke to her in Tamil. She said, why you are worried? Act is going to be changed. <laughs> I leave it like that. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Dharapal, you will have more work. You can go on publishing more and more. So b b you can make it as a business. <laughs> Every six months you can release one uh, article. That's why I'm making it a foundation, sir. Yeah. You can do that. We are the recipients. We will be very happy to receive it. But very little we will understand. More and more changes comes. Because they said user friendly. Only one word I told that lady was that she was very much impressed. Sir, the entire act was done by the previous government. She said, oh, <laughs> then we must change. That is good. Thank you. So, Tamaso Ma Jodhirga Maya, you are representing ICW Institute. So, as a mark of uh, that, kindly, uh, once again. Photo. <laughs>